At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're bringing one of our longtime friends, Sarah Taylor, with us. And she is not only an energy healer, spirit guide, but also a stand-up comedian. And we're going to be talking today about following your unique path, because I think that that's exactly what you've done, Sarah, is you followed your unique path of merging these two worlds that really wouldn't necessarily kind of go together and finding a way. And she hosts the most amazing comedy night here at Liberate, uh, you know, all about astrology and stand-up comedy and, you know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and it's been a completely smooth, just a smooth ride. It's been so easy the whole time. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it hasn't been easy to sort of like put them together. It's sort of like there's no, um, there's no split with like, oh my God, I'm a spiritual practitioner and a spiritual teacher and healer. And then I'm a creative person over here. For me, it's always been this flow. But well, especially, audiences. especially the two, too, because, you know, like, I don't know if you've gotten that, but I've always tried to scatter spirituality with a dose of fun and not take it too seriously. Yeah. But there seems to be a dogma within the spiritual community as it's a serious work and you've totally. got to be very serious about it. And they're, they want to perceive a person that, you know isn't like humorous not necessarily yes. isn't scattering something with comedy right you know yeah. and so i feel like even for you merging those two together has been probably even more of a challenge than it because of that yeah it's like people's perception it's like you know well she can't really be like a serious energy healer and somebody who could support me on my spiritual path mm -hmm. and be a stand-up comedian and then sometimes people who only know me as a stand-up comedian, they're like, what, what do you do? Oh, you do this little like weird thing on the side, right? Um, but what I've noticed is that through the years, people have um, gotten into it. Like in 2014, I launched a show called The Divine Mess Show, okay. where I went on tour to like alternative churches and crystal shops and yoga studios with comedy. And then at the end, um, a meditation, I would bring my singing bowls and do Reiki on the audience and I'm an intuitive so sometimes I'll read the audience and play with them and stuff and um, people when we were booking it you know it was like wait a minute you do both or I mean you're into spiritual and I'm like no I work as a healer yeah. and a like it like, was no people, I actually do that and I'm really good at it <laughs> and, and people were like and you're actually a comedian will she make me laugh like it was so weird but now yeah. now it's like Nobody thinks that's weird. And I'm like, finally. Yeah, but but like, to, finally. to forge that path when people did think it was weird, you know, is, yeah. a, is a testament. And, you know, about it's the how, Uranus in my chart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a how important it is to listen to your truth, right? Yeah, you know? Yeah. So yeah. how was that for you? Like, let's think back a little bit. And, you yeah, know, like. Um, well, I mean, it's so weird because I got into stand-up comedy around the same time I got into Buddhism. Okay. Um, because the two go together so well. Um, and I had never really been spiritual. I was an atheist. Okay. And I'd been an actress and a singer and did experimental theater and all sorts of stuff. Um, but in my 30s, I got into both around the same time. And What was the catalyst for that? Um, well, I wanted to... I wanted to find happiness. I wanted mm -hmm. to understand why, like, I was, you know, I'd been diagnosed with depression and anxiety in my 20s, and mm -hmm. I was put on medication that didn't quite work. I was misdiagnosed. And I got off of all of that, and I, I had a sneaking suspicion that um, I needed to do something else to find fulfillment and peace. And so I got yeah. into meditation and studied uh, Theravada and Vajrayana Buddhism and became a very serious practitioner all the while beginning to do stand-up in my 30s, which like people don't usually start stand-up in their 30s. Yeah. They usually start like when they're 18 or 28. But I was like, I'm going to do it now. Um, and it was, it felt like a calling, both of both a spiritual path and standing on stage alone with a microphone felt like, I don't know, it, it, it didn't make sense to me at the time because I'd been a Shakespearean actress and I'd, you know, like all this yeah. stuff. But um, 
but yeah, and then about you know five years in, I had a you know pretty big shift in consciousness where you know everything changes permanently, not a passing experience, but some would call that a non-dual awakening. Mm -hmm. And um, everything got turned upside down in my world. And I was like, I got to find a way to bring this together. And it would be a few more years until I was like, ah, the Divine Mess show, that's what it is. And so that's the show that I take on tour. Yeah. And, um, and I just started calling around churches and different places. And um, you know, I was doing stand-up comedy at like the Comedy Store and the Laugh Factory and the Hollywood Improv and trying to bring spiritual material in. So this was probably like 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And um, it would sometimes it would just fall completely flat. Like I'd be talking about crystals or meditation or something. People would be like, ugh. You know, but then, okay, I'm going to start talking about something wacky. Let's talk about relationships. And, you know, and then yeah. people would get on board again. Um, but now I notice that there's a nice flow. Well, yeah, there seems to be like especially. so much more people, and I I see it especially a young among the younger kids. You know, like totally. there's these huge trends on like TikTok and everything. Where like, and I mean, so many kids coming in here. And when I say kids, I, I mean like ten year olds. Like you know, like it, totally. It totally. They don't think it's weird. They don't think spirituality is like yeah. something separate from your life, or that you have to change your life in order to be spiritual or yeah. have a spiritual practice. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that too. It's like um, I'm Gen X, mm -hmm. and and so it seems like millennials and Gen Z, I mean, yeah. ugh. So those, so those much, are the kids yeah. that are, those are the kids, I sound really old, but those are the ones that are coming to, coming to my shows or coming to What's Your Sign, which we do mm -hmm. here, um, and, and being like, this is great. We want to do it again. You yeah. know, we want to come back again. And they which, get it. Which I mean, it. And, and on the bigger level, and, you know, I applaud you for continuing down that path. Is that, I'm stubborn. That, that, but it is like spirituality and not taking things seriously and having fun and laughing and enjoying life go hand in hand. They do. You know, like that's, that's it. It's the pursuit of happiness. It's, it's the connection to the divine. It's seeing everything is perfect. It's not realizing that even if it's, crumbling around you where can you find the humor in that because yeah. it's only temporary right and, exactly. it, and it's a part of an expression to teach and and evolve you so you know the moment I think that you take life and yourself too seriously and you don't find that you're you're create resistance and yeah. where resistance is creates discomfort and that's what creates yeah. unhappiness you know when we don't For go sure. with the flow when we more for sure so, you know yeah yeah and you know it's to your point which I, that's what i've found like the further i go on the spiritual path the more light everything becomes the more funny it is it's a cosmic joke basically yeah. and and of course as you know like the deeper you go on a spiritual path if you're you know have a serious practice the edges of the ego the edges of the separate self get more and more diffuse and so it's you don't care about like looking like a jerk in, or an idiot or like a weirdo yeah. in front of people or it doesn't um yeah you're less self-conscious and I think that really lends itself to laughing at yourself and laughing at life mm -hmm. but if if we feel that we're this separate entity separate from God separate from life separate from each other and we've got to sort of you know hang on to that we're gonna get really pissed off if like something tries to rock it you yeah. know but if, if that solidity isn't there, then we're sort of like, okay, this is a ride, you mm -hmm. know, and and we can laugh at it a little bit more, which doesn't mean that we don't, you know, yeah, get upset it, about it stuff. It doesn't but, mean, yeah, I mean, we're human, we have all these emotions, yeah. right? But I, I like the way that you, you said that it's a cosmic joke, because I mean, really, I mean, what are we doing here, right? You know, yeah. and it's kind of hilarious when you think about it, when you were floating around on this rock that's held together by an invisible force called gravity and we're like this little like speck but yet yep. we think and that we think we know we, everything we think we've we got get it so, under control so mad when our salad comes out with the wrong totally. dressing or right. that you know and gluten intolerant <laughs> i mean it is true but <laughs> but yeah we get so worked up because it's going to shake our little world that we've created but you're right we're floating on a rock like this is this is nuts yeah you know so what else are we going to do but like look at it as an adventure yeah, you know? and our like time frame of this incarnation is so small in the 
big it totally picture is. Of it's it. like a blink of an eye. Like on the other side, we're like, I think I'm going to go down for a while. You're going to go down to Earth. Yeah, I'm going to go down to Earth. Okay, see you in a minute. You know, like yeah. But to us, it's like this. And that minute long can lifetime. you know can feel like a hundred years, but it's, exactly. it's a blink of an eye. Yeah, you know, it's a blink of an eye. What's happening? Yeah. And we take it so seriously. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, so why why do you know like the topic today? is all about forging or, you know, going down your own unique path. And why do you think that that's so important for people that are watching to, you know, I know you've done it, but where do you think that that value is for people? Yeah. And I'm still, I mean, and I'm still finding it, you know, it's like oh. a lifelong thing for sure. But well, we're um, still living, right? I, I think know, so. Right? That means that we're still on we're a path st- of some sort and we're still right. learning. We're still figuring, I have, a, I've figured it all out now. <laughs> you know, then you're like done. Um, I think it's really important because to your point, what you said earlier, like we have these ideas that, you know, a spiritual teacher is supposed to look like this or a business owner is supposed to be like this or a wife or a sister or a husband is supposed to be like this or, and, um, you know, it's going to show up differently. We are going to show up differently in every role. And I think people, um, you know, especially with social media, which I think has like a cutting, it has like a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, we see these perfect lives or these sort of um, roles that people are adopting. And we're like, oh, I should be more like that. But yet at the same time, we're seeing a lot of people be vulnerable on social media. Mm -hmm. We're seeing people who are multi-hyphenates. We're seeing people who are just like revealing their true selves on social media. So, um, but I think it's important to forge your unique path because, um, you know, it, you can waste a lot of time and energy and suffer a lot trying to fit yourself into a mold, yeah. you know? And, you know, like I, I'm an empath. A lot of people watching are probably empaths and highly sensitive. And I work with a lot of people who are super sensitive. And the, the gift of that is that you're more tuned in spiritually, right? Mm-hmm. And you might be more tuned into a unique path for yourself and your unique, unique callings. But you're also super tuned in to what other people expect of you and want from you. Mm, and usually yeah. highly sensitive people are adaptable and can like start shape-shifting and kind of molding unconsciously. Yeah, because they just start connecting to that energy and until yeah. you learn how to decipher between what's yours and what somebody else is. Yep. You might think that that's your desire or that's your wanting or that's, that's your, right. your thoughts or feelings, you know. And wait, yeah. I don't really feel this way or yeah. I don't. I'm not really anxious. Where is this coming from? Exactly. I know I have a friend who's super sensitive. She's like, I feel like like super like <laughs> like this today. And I'm like, it's the collective baby. I'm feeling it too. Um, but oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. And then we're like, okay, I'm better now. <laughs> but yeah, being able to decipher between your own energy and the energy of others and then knowing what to do about it, you know? Yeah. Grounding yourself, clearing your energy field, putting up a boundary. You know, we, we're not separate from everything. It, we're, we're the one thing living uniquely through each of us, I always say. But we have energy bodies and yeah. we need to put up a boundary, you know? Mm-hmm. So like you ever do that? You just sort of yeah. put up your little... Yeah. Little shield. Yep. Little, uh, imagine a, a little like, for me, it's like a tube, a mirror with a knife on the bottom, just cutting everything Ooh. and reflecting outward. You know, Great. so like if anybody tries to go doot, doot, it beeps back. Deep, deep, deep. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Sorry. Like mirrors. You guys might think I'm crazy. But yeah. No, it's totally not crazy. <laughs> I mean, I, I teach a class for empaths called the Empaths Toolbox. And that's one of the things that I talk about is find what material you want your boundary to be made of. It could be mirrors. It could be Reiki. Mm-hmm. It could be hematite, rose quartz. It can be just unconditional love that's so powerful and it's just beaming that out to people, mm-hmm. you know, and they're psychic junk. Um, but yeah, so important. And, and it's a, it's made people realize the power that they have and that yeah. the intention. And it's like literally these visualizations or projections of shields have different feelings and different energies depending yeah. you know and so yeah. they're, they're they're you know like it might seem like you're just oh i'm just imagining things or i'm just playing imagination but right there's a reality of what that actually goes to in the energetic world yeah it creates an imprint on yeah. the energy field around you and it also doesn't separate you from others because sometimes in class people be like well i don't want to be separate from mm-hmm. my spouse or my friend or you know whatever and it's like you're not se- well, I mean, you're not separate you can try to be separate but you're not you're the one thing right um but you need to be boundaried yeah, yeah. i yeah, love yeah, it yeah it's the paradox you know we're such a paradox 
We are. I mean, but that's, we live in a world of duality. That's like, right. That's part of it, right? That's right. So up and down, left and right, front and back, bad and good, whatever, you yep, know? Yep, yep, yep. And in that, we're just navigating. Yeah. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. The red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. And, you know, I think nowadays when even more so, I mean, I think it's always important that throughout to find to find your own uniqueness. I mean, there's a reason that there's 7.6 billion people on this planet and yeah. everybody's different. Uh, even, you know, identical twins, even if they can look similar and almost identical, their behaviors, their mannerisms, the way that they are, there can yeah. be some similarity and overlap, but there is a vast degree of difference, you know, and there's a uniqueness there. And we spend so much of our time trying to fit in and trying to do what we believe others, society, yeah. parents, whatever that is for you, like fits into and and instead of listening to our truth, you know, and saying, okay, well, I can totally. be this. I can I can be a mother and be this. I can be this person in this. I can be a comedian and a healer. I can be the, you know, like, yeah. but you can be five things at once. You can be whatever, you know, like you, you can sure be you, can. you know. I mean, you are whether you recognize it or not. And whether you own it or not, you just are, you know. Mm -hmm. You might push it down and then that might yeah. manifest in these you know, maybe unhappiness, a stress, you know, and then they can even manifest as diseases and ailments. For sure, right? yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. neglecting the truth, right? Yep. And then, you know, the one thing that I think that happened that's, there's a few good things that have come out of COVID, you know, but one of the biggest yeah. things that I noticed is that people have taken the time to turn inwards and ask themselves, is this the life that I really want? And yep. you have so many people shifting their careers i mean they, yeah. they're they literally coining it is calling it the great resonation right oh, really i hadn't heard that that's yeah. so awesome i love it and so you know more people have quit their jobs in the last few months than ever in history yeah and that's the, intentionally quitting this isn't you yeah. know getting furloughed because of the pandemic or laid off or you yeah, know everybody or was so scared of losing their job in 2020 and now people are like goodbye you know <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, 2020, it felt like it was like a reckoning, right? Mm -hmm. You know, where we had to sit with ourselves and sort of like really see what is out of sync in our life. And yeah. so many people had to sit with themselves who had never done it. And then it feels like 2021 was like, okay, n now what am I going to do about this? And 2021 yeah. was like super chaotic, you know? Like, what am I going to do with these things that I've realized? And 2022, I feel like people are being really brave. And we're shooting this today on a Leo full moon. So we've got bravery and stepping out and being strong and roaring. And, you know, um, so now I feel people are, yeah, they're stepping out. That we, You know, we needed, we needed a moment to sort of yeah, which right is, ourselves. Which is why I feel like this topic is that at the perfect time, you know, if somebody's like on that edge of saying, you know, oh, should I do this? Should I not? Like, it's like, forge your own path. Like, be you, you know, like, yeah, you know, trust that if you made it this far in life, you can figure things out. And, you know, yeah, like, yeah. of course, I'm not responsible for any of the things that happen as a result of Me this neither. broadcast. Don't listen to us. <laughs> but, but no, I mean, like, if you, you know, you can figure out, like, we are more resourceful than we give ourselves credit know, for. We're yeah. not the smartest creatures. We're not the fastest creatures. We're not the strongest we're creatures. Not. But we are the most adaptable and we are resourceful. We are. And, and asking for support, you know, mm -hmm. like getting support. That's why like your place offers such support with your healers and your guides and all the different stuff that you offer in the events and classes. Because I see more people um, leaning on support. I see yeah. more people seeking coaches and, um, I don't know, support systems and just leaning on their community more. Yeah. I mean, I feel when this started happening, I sort of had like a I mean, you know, it didn't take a genius psychic or anything to sense this, but I was like, oh my God, we're really going to, in early 2020, I was like, we're really going to have to become more community focused. This is going to make people think of the whole rather than the individual a lot more. And I, I'm seeing that, like yeah. communities have come together and, you know, it takes a village. It really does for everything. So, Wait, and, and that's how we used to be. Exactly. You know, like I think that, 
you know, and in everything you, you sometimes, and this can be your personal life. This can be a timeline of civilization. This can be whatever, but you take some time and sometimes you have to get away from the path to realize that the path was the right path. Right. Sure. You know, like that it's like, happened. you know, yeah, you step away and then you realize, OK, this is where it's supposed <clears throat> to be, you know, like. But in that separation, you have the realizations. Yeah. And I, I learn a lot through through what I don't want. Mm-hmm. Have you done yeah. that? Yeah. Like, OK, wait, I don't want that. And, mm-hmm. you know, and um, Buddhism and Hinduism, they call that the path of neti neti. Okay. Not this, not this. You know, who 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 am I? That's the big question. Right. Where that's the stages of enlightenment or awakening or who, who am I, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we go, well, that's not who I am. Yeah. That role isn't who I am. That, that set of behaviors that I adopt when I'm around these types of people, that's not who I am. Well, then what am I? Well, I'm mm-hmm. not that, not that, not that, netty, netty. And then by elimination, you can, you know, discover the radiance of your, of your true being. Mm-hmm. And I feel that that um, is similar in finding our path in the world, our worldly path, that we can do a path of netty, netty in the world. Like, yeah. not that, not that, not that, not that. And it might confuse uh, the people in your life because I remember when I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember when I was uh, exploring stand-up and Buddhism and uh, becoming an energy healer and all this stuff, you know, people were like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, it was very confusing to people mm-hmm. because I'd be like, well, I'm going to quit my job as a massage therapist because mm-hmm. I was doing massage and I'm going to just do energy healing. And everybody's like, well, wait, what are you? And I'm like, okay, not this. And then now, like years later, I'm like, okay, I still like doing massage and I do yeah. body work with Reiki and, but, and then I add it back in, but there's this pruning that we have to do, but we become so rigid yeah. with our roles and, and what's worked before and what we think keeps us safe yeah. that, that, we, we don't venture out and go like, well, let's just see, let's try this out. Yeah, and, and diminishing the rigidity, I think is so important, right? Because then there is that aspect that I see happening, which, I, you know, you've reminded me in, in your story of like, because I said that I don't do this anymore, then now I'm away from that. But what if that is a part of you too, yeah. but you needed to separate to try this out, right? Totally, you know? that and it, always it, happens to me, yeah. Yeah, and and so many people feel like, well, I used to do that. Well, I used to, I was once a musician and that didn't really work, so now I'm doing this, so now I'm not even picking up a guitar yeah. anymore. It's like, well, how, what if you, what if that's incorporating? I mean, it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean to be. Sometimes we try things out, we yeah. walk away from them, they don't serve us, right? But there's a lot of times that it's about picking up these pieces along the way yes. and they're all part of this puzzle that fit perfectly and you're seeing the scene be built of the puzzle but when you're picking up the individual pieces sometimes you have to set it down for a moment because that color palette isn't fitting in anywhere the piece doesn't fit so you yeah. say i'm going to come back to that maybe yeah. you never come back to it maybe it was a part of an old puzzle that wasn't even yours but sometimes it fits perfectly yeah, I, I love that, that it's a puzzle or it's like a tapestry. or or, And also it's like when identity gets woven into it, when we attach our identity to it, mm-hmm. I mean, that's where we can get rigid. Like, well, I'm not a musician anymore. I'm a this. Yeah. I'm a barista. I'm a coffee maker. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. And and it's like, well, that it's not who you are anyway. Like, yeah, I'm a comedian. I'm an energy healer. I'm a spiritual guide. I'm an intuitive. I, I'm an actress. I'm, I'm all these th- things, but they're not... They're not really you. They're just yeah, a part yeah. of you. They're a piece of a of a reflection into you, but you're so much like more that. than any yeah. of it. For sure. So that's the whole thing when people are sort of like, but I'm this, but I'm that. And it's like, well, you're none of it, really. Yeah. You're all of it and you're none of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the great paradox, right, yeah. that we were talking about is is that, you know, so I think that rigidity can really come when we have identity attached to what it is that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, it. and that's what causes a lot of suffering. I mean, you see it like, you know, sometimes with parents when their their kids get out of the house and that empty nest, like, what am I now? I was a parent, you know, like, exactly. and now I'm like, you know, well, you're still a parent, but they maybe it just looks do. different, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. When you forged your unique path, I mean, look at this. You've you've let everything kind of flow. Yeah, I try, you know. I'm you've so, sort I'm of followed your calling. <laughs> your I'm, different callings, you followed them. Yeah, it's just like, I mean, I look, I try to look at the world as a playground and that there's so many things that are interesting and fascinating that I always want to like dive into it. Like, yeah. okay, let me study this. Let me do this. Let me, me, let me learn a little bit of that. And, you know, like, 
okay, well, yeah, I mean, if I went into society norms or belief systems, I probably wouldn't say like, okay, you can do this and this and that, you know, like they don't normally go together. But then it's like, well, people every day are doing that's that's what all of the people through history try different things and the world's forever changing. Yep. So, you exactly. know, follow what is, excites you. And maybe sometimes it'll be boring and you get through it and you're like, ah, that not me. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Well, and also, do you do this too where like something will really interest you? I mean, I have ADHD. I, I was actually diagnosed with it. So I, I um, you know, it's, it's like you'll get really into something for a while. And then like the illusion is like, oh my gosh, then you have to um, make that your career or you have to make that, yeah. you have to make something into it. I think like we get a lot of pressure and a lot of messages that if we're interested in something, it then has to become a way that we make a living and it's our whole identity oh, yeah. and it's our whole role. But like, you you know, you yeah. have your interests like over here and over there and over here and over there. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes you're into it for a while and then you're like, okay. But then you pick up a thread of what you were so into for like three months or a year or whatever, like you were saying, and you weave it into the tapestry of what you're doing in the in the future. So. Yeah. And there's so many things I find in, that are these fragments of elements of those excitement squirrel moments, I call you know? Yeah. And that end up, you know, 10 years later being right here and being like, oh, wow. Totally. Like, I, I, you know, and I kind of look at everything as is seeing the symbolism or seeing the synchronicity in things. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe I was, I, I, I did that and I deep dove into that because yeah. that applies to here, you know, over a decade later. Yeah, but, completely. you know, and it was like, I'm so grateful that I had that experience or that I did do that because it fit, you know? It fit at the time. Yeah, like I remember I like got really into like learning the guitar. Uh huh as an adult, not as a kid. And um, I was like really into it for like a year. And then I got to a certain point and I was like, oh. And I was like, <laughs> why don't I, <laughs> why don't I pick up, um, why don't I pick up the guitar anymore? What's going on? And then like a few years ago, I st- people started asking me because I sing to like write funny songs for shows mm-hmm. and do different things. And I was like, oh, and then I pick up the car and I'm like, oh yeah, I can play it again. And, 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 you know, so now I'm like incorporating that into my comedy and, See? you know, I didn't have to become some virtuoso guitarist, <laughs> Yeah. you know, but we do get sent that message that like, well, if you do something, do it really, really well. Yeah. You have to do it really, really well. Or like you said, you have to figure out a way to use it. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. There's so much pressure yeah. in society, I feel, about, well, what are you going to do with that? Or how to, how is that going to create yeah. money or value? And well, less what, so what now. What if the value was just your happiness? Yeah, you just I know. enjoyed it. Like, it's, what's wrong with that being the value of it? Yeah, I mean. I was like, curious. That's it. <laughs> exactly. My curiosity is why. I have to, I have to satisfy my curiosity. Um, but yeah, younger generations, I mean, they're just like, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, of course. And, you know, listening to your intuition, too. I mean, that's something that you've really done along the way. And so have I. And, you know, being able to discern between like fear uh-huh. and what is really an intuitive nudge, you yeah. know, because it's so it's so many times they, they mask their self, you know, yeah, for sure. And I hear that a lot within uh, within spiritual people is they'll be like, yeah, it was my, you know, uh, my guides told me or my intuition said, that, you know, and it was like, was it? Or yeah, do you was just, it? Or was it, it cloaked in conditioning that, you, that know? you can't quite see right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it being, it's being aware because we do hold like, you know, pains, wounds, traumas, different things from our past. And we project sure. those on to especially relationship, partnerships, different kind of different dynamics. And we don't realize that you know, and we say, okay, no, it was my gut feeling. Yeah, it's always <laughs> funny when people say that. I, you know, I come across people who are either like, well, my guides told me, just like you said. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, or, really? I mean, maybe they did, but, or maybe you just didn't feel like going to work today and you wanted to go to the beach. I mean, did the guides that. tell you that? I know, right? You know, I can't do that session today. Um, my guides told me it wasn't a fit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cut to cut to pictures the, on the beach. Drinking, okay. a, drinking a tequila and they're like, what? You know, it's like, I guess your guides wanted you to get tipsy. Okay. All right. Yeah. But either, either that people are like, well, I don't know. You know, my intuition's telling me this or people who are like, I don't have any intuition. I don't, I don't, I can't, you know, and it's like, no, you do. You do. It's just like, you know, it's so following your unique path. It's like, I feel like everybody's intuition speaks to them in a unique way. And so we have to kind of listen to that. Like, how does your 
intuition speak to you? I mean, like for me, it's mm -hmm. like my body, I can tell, like my body does something, you know, so I have a clairsentience, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, which I think we all do, um, but I'm also clairvoyant, so mm -hmm. I'll get flashes of something. I'll see a word or a image or a symbol, or I'll sort of see, if I start to move towards something, and I'll see myself doing it and see like 10 steps ahead. I'm like, oh, like just suddenly, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get flashes of that. But if I can't see, if, it, if, if there isn't a clairvoyant kind of knowing coming in, that doesn't mean don't do it either. Yeah. But, um, you know, a clear audience. I mean, you know, I've had, I've heard that like when I've met somebody for the first time who's really important to me, I've heard like, this is an important person. I'm like, whoa, okay, all right, you know. But I think for people who, who maybe are like, well, I don't get those big kinds of nudges, what do I do? Um, you know, I guess I would say like, like, like kind of what we're talking about, like get into action anyway, yeah. and see if you like it or you don't like it. Listen to the signals that your body are giving you. Um, tune into how you feel when you do it. Um, mm -hmm. Tune into how you feel when you, when you hit, um, difficulties because everything will have difficulties yeah you know? and, it, and it's training yourself too you yeah know? like some of it maybe you won't have the the words or the hearing the right. voices and stuff like right. that but in your unique way of understanding maybe there'll be a little nudge maybe it'll some like a little yes. trickle in your stomach maybe it'll be like you you feel this chill that goes through your body maybe it'll right. be like something but right. like you become aware of how you are this antenna yes. for the outside world, and the and the more you train, the better you become, right? Yeah. I always like to like give it as like for for people that aren't too aware and they've drank in wine before. Speaking of which, this is vodka. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, <But> woo! <laughs> so it's allergies in LA right now. I know it's it's so bad. Oh my god! And I was like, I couldn't breathe. It. I was like, oh, <laughs> Like yeah. asthmatic. I'm like, <laughs> but it, everything's I swear, blooming. Everything is. It's like all the fruit trees, everything, and the pollen's it's everywhere. It's beautiful. It is pretty. But anyway, I interrupted you with oh, my big oh. jug drinking. No, yeah, the jug drinking. So, like wine, like, you know, if you think about it, if somebody first starts to drink wine, there's red wine and there's white wine. That's pretty much it. But if they start drinking it more. They can tell the difference between a cab and a Pinot and a That's Merlot. Right. The and they can, and they can and tell the difference between a good cab and a bad cab or even the regions that they're grown. That's right. right. And it's you're drinking wine, right? And it yeah. looks red and it this and that. But why are you suddenly noticing the different subtleties on your palate? Because you've trained yourself to be aware of those subtleties right. on the palate. Were they going on the whole time? Yeah. Were you aware of it? No, because no. you didn't know how to decipher in your taste buds. Right. But you became more sensitive or you became more aware of what senses were going on and how to tune into that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's the, the same, same thing for, with our intuition. Yeah. Yeah. And in, and in knowing like how to follow your own unique path, mm -hmm. you know. And some people might describe the wine as cat litter, and some people might describe it as like cat litter. <laughs> it has a fruity. It has the base notes are of uh, friskies, um, and then you're like, oh, that person just has cats, and like cat food fell in their glass. Okay, that's what's happening. All right. No, I remember like I worked at like a wine bar before, and like the, some of the like things, and but literally one of like the descriptors was cat litter. I'm like, who would are you serious? It? Oh my god! I used to work in a nice restaurant. I never remember that, but that is it's, it's like, got tannins who, and cat litter. Who describes it as cat litter? I just <laughs> I just uh, stuck with me. I, I guess you do now. <laughs> yes, now I do. I can taste that. You know. When you're toasting with people, are you like, oh, fruity cat litter? <laughs> I need fresh demo. step <laughs> fresh step is the best fresh step will get you drunk let me tell you oh so Sarah that brings me into like you do you, you know like you're both available to do spiritual work you're Reiki master you do spiritual guide you do um these classes for a uh, training empaths and as well as beautiful fun evenings of comedy so where can people find you 
Well, I have two websites. Um, for a long time, I had one website, and it was confusing for people. As we were saying, they'd come and they to like look for like a spiritual guide or something, and they'd be like, "Why are there like comedy videos here? I, I'm so confused." <laughs> and then sometimes people would be like, "Oh, I need to book her for a comedy show," and they're like, "Why is she talking about like Reiki?" Um, so I have two websites. One is sarahtaylor.org. Org. Okay. Uh, .com is a real estate agent in Florida, so don't bug her. Um, but sarahtaylor.org is my creative work, my okay. performances and stuff like that. And lightofyourbeing.org mm -hmm. is where people can find just my spiritual work and read testimonials and find out about the sessions that I do and the classes and the full moon circles and all that good stuff. All that fun stuff, yeah. yes. And once a month, we plan on having you here for What's Your Sign. Yeah, What's Your Sign with Lars Mellis, who is a professional astrologer and a stand-up comedian. So they found their the kindred souls of That's merging right. the two, spirituality and com a comedy together. That's right. It's a fun show. We do an astrological weather uh, report and... Uh, we roast the sun signs, uh, and maybe some people get their chakras red. So, <laughs> and comedy, yeah. stand-up comedy. It was really good. It's a it's a fun night. They had one here the other month, and we're gonna start having it regularly once a yeah. month. And uh, we hope that you come out, and then you can uh, pick Sarah's brain about other things and work yeah. with her on some deeper things to get the support that you need in your journey to maybe forging your own unique path as well. Yes. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to share you. before we wrap up? I just want to say thanks. Okay. And um, may you find your unique path. It's already underway. Aw, oh, so beautiful. Thank you for joining. Please, everybody, like, share, comment. You know, algorithms are a thing. If you don't, just give me two seconds, a little button, a little thumbs up, you know, that's all you got to do. And it will help other people find this that could be use useful to have this content to make some shifts in their life. Thank you so much. Till next time. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.